Now let's move on to the fifth question of this paper. It's given that the diagram shows a block D of mass 1000 kgs. It's supported by two sloping struts AD and BD. Each of them are attached at an angle of 45 degrees to fixed points A and B respectively on this horizontal floor. And then this block is also held in place by this vertical rope CD as you can see over here. And it's attached to a fixed point C on this horizontal ceiling. Now the tension in this rope is exerting as 500 newtons. And along with that, it's given that this block is remaining in equilibrium, which basically means that the net force acting in Y direction is zero. Along with that net force acting on X direction is also zero. Or in simpler words, you can just call it that the net force acting on this body is zero. So that these are the kind of information given to us. And let's say if this kind of diagram was not given to you in the question. So just by understanding this kind of uh, piece of paragraph, you must be able to create this sort of diagram, something similar to this, all right? So make sure that you're having this kind of practice if not already, but anyway, we are good to go because diagram is already given to us. Now, the first part of this question is to find the magnitude of force in each of the struts AD and BD. So now one thing that uh, would be pretty much sure to us, whether because of these two struts, the force is acting in the downward side, or the upward side is just by locating the forces in the y direction. So on the top side, it's already 500 newtons. That's the tension because of this rope CD. But now in the y direction, in the bottom side, there is also a weight of this block. So the weight of this block is 100 into 10, right? We know that weight is given by mg. So we know that mass is 100. Gravity of Earth is to be considered as 10 for mechanics. And uh, so yeah, that becomes 1000 newtons. And clearly now we can see that the force in the downward side is greater than the force on the upward side of this block. So obviously we need some kind of force in the upward side to balance this thousand newtons. And therefore we can conclude that the force because of this AD strut and BD strut would be acting on this block in the upward direction to balance this thousand newtons. So let's say that if I'm drawing a line parallel to BD, I mean not parallel to BD on top of the, I'm just extending this line over here. And let me choose a different color this time. So if I'm extending this line somewhere like this, and for AD also, if I'm extending this line like this, and if I just draw a dotted line for like, you know, to resolve this kind of forces in X direction, right? And if I mark angles, I know that this angle is 45, which is parallel to X axis. So over here, we are drawing a line, which is also parallel to X axis. It's the same continuation of the line. So we can also say that this angle over here is 45 degrees. Similarly, this is also 45 degrees because this parallel line and this line is sharing 45 degrees over here. This should also share 45 degrees. Now let's just give a name to the tension that has been experienced uh, because of this AD strut and a BD strut. So for AD, let's just call it T1 and for BD, let's call it T2. And now, we, our job is to find out what's the value of this T2 and this T1. Once we are done, we are done with the first part. So if we talk about, let's say if we want to resolve the forces in the horizontal direction first. So for, or I can say resolving horizontally. Resolving horizontally. So now what do we have? Over here we can say that See, there is one important rule that we need to keep in mind to quickly resolve this kind of forces in either X or Y direction. So whenever you are having a force, like let's say T1 in this case, and if you are rotating in the direction of the marked angle, then T1 will take cos component of that angle. So over here, you can say that T1 cos 45 is acting in this direction. So let's say that if I would draw this kind of resolving forces in the X for T1, it will be T1 cos 45 over here. And if I have to resolve it away from the marked angle, see, remember that there is also an angle over here, but let's say we are not really bothered to find about it. We know that 45, 45 makes 90, so there is a 45 over here. So either you can call it T1 cos 45 because of this 45, or else you can also call this as T1 sine 45, because see, that's a very basic rule that we must know in mechanics when it comes to resolving forces. So over here on the Y direction, along with this 500, there is one more force acting over here, which is T1 sine of 45. 
the reason that 45 is coming over here is because of this angle, not that angle. We know that sine 45 and cos 45 is equal to each other. That's why it might create a bit confusion, but I hope this concept is clear in all of your mind to quickly resolve the forces, right? So now on the left side, we know that if we rotate this T2 in the direction of 45, this is going to be T2 cos 45. And now if I rotate away from this angle, over here there will be one more force, that is T2 sine 45. Now this 45 is again because of this angle. And yeah, that's it. We are done with the resolving forces. So it basically means that we have sub like created two components of this T1, one in X direction, one in Y direction. So we are done with this. Let's get rid of that. Similarly for T2, we have resolved in its X and Y direction. So we can just get rid of it. And these are our final forces acting on this particular body. So now if we go ahead and solve this horizontally, we can say that because this is resting in equilibrium, we can say that left force is equal to right force or the forward force equals to the backward force. If we do that, we are having T2 cos 45 is equal to T1 cos 45, which simply means that this cos 45 and this cos 45 gets out. We can say that my T1 is equal to T2. So both of these values of T2 and T1 are just equal to each other. You can just call one thing as the other thing. That's what we are able to get by solving it horizontally. Now let's resolve these forces. I mean, we have already resolved it, but let's find these equations for the uh, vertical direction. So vertical direction. So in the vertical direction, we are having one, two, three, three forces in the upper direction. Make sure that you are converting this T2 and T1 to a same uh, constant. Let's call it a T for example. Okay, let's just call this as T. Okay, so now if you solve this vertically, what do we have? So therefore, we'll be having upward force equal to downward force because again, it's in equilibrium. So both of them are balanced. So on top, it is uh, sine 45, sine 45 of let's say T. So T sine 45 plus T sine 45 is basically 2T sine 45, right? So 2T sine 45. And along with that, there is also 500 Newtons acting on the upward direction is equals to 1000 Newtons. And now, it all boils down to solving for the value of T. See, if you did not solve, let's say vertical first, I mean, if you did not solve horizontal first, you won't get this kind of relation, but it's still fine. Over here, you will be getting an equation as like, you know, T1 sine 45 plus T2 sine 45 plus 500 equal to 1000. But right after that, you will be so uh, solving this equation for the horizontal direction as well. So from there, you will get this idea that T1 equals to T2. And then you can do this kind of changes in vertical direction to get the value of T. So it does not, it's not compulsory that we solve in the X direction first or the Y direction first. It all depends on how much amount of practice you have done. Over here, I knew that both of this will be canceled out and T1 will be equal to T2. I could sense this kind of thing by, because there was no external force acting in the X direction. So that's the only possible thing that T1 must be equal to T2. And because of which I, I started with this horizontal direction. But even if I start with vertical direction, at the end, I'm sure that I will be getting the answer, all right, irrespective of what direction I choose first. But anyway, now if I solve this, my T will be equal to 1000 minus 500, that's 500. Now that's divided by 2 sine 45. That's it. Now we just have to solve this in my calcium. So 500 divided by 2 sine 45, make sure that the angle is in, I mean, your KLC is in degrees mode because you are using degrees mode over here. So the answer comes out to be 250 root 2 newtons. Or if I tell you in decimals, it's approximately 354 newtons. 354 newtons. Or you can say that this is correct to 3 SF. So that's the answer of the first part. All right, so I hope that all of this concept of resolving forces, if the angle comes in between, it's always cos component of that angle. And if the angle does not come in between, it's always the sine component of the angle on the other side. So I hope these kind of concepts are clear to you. If not, then please feel free to enroll into our online batches for AS and A-level exam preparations. We provide classes for mathematics, further mathematics, physics, chemistry, computer science, and all the other kind of subjects that you can ask for. All right, so now, that's all about this particular part of this question five. Let's move ahead and see what's asked in question B of question five. So now let me just get rid of this kind of things because obviously now there will be a new situation given to us in part B and we'll have to solve accordingly. 
So let's see what's given to us now. A horizontal force is acting that is of F newtons in the direction parallel to AB. Now we have to find the value of F for which the magnitude of the force in the strut AD becomes zero. All right. So the two things that we are noting down over here is that the value is F newtons applied in the direction parallel to AB. So AB is basically the X direction. And the value of the AD struts becomes zero. So because of AD, we were experiencing a force in this direction. So now if this becomes zero, it automatically means that the value of the force must be acting in this direction to balance this out. So this must be your F newtons. And because of BD, obviously there is a force acting over here. And now the value must change because of TBD. It's, it's not the same value that we got in the first part because the dynamics of this whole system has changed. Let's just call it T for example, all right? So let's just call it T. And we already know that over here, we are having a 45 degrees, right? So over here, if I resolve the forces, this is going to become, because this is 45 degrees, I can call this as T cos 45. And I know that this is uh, T sine 45. So yes, we are done with this resolving forces. So we can get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. All right, and now we are simply asked to find out the value of this F. Okay, don't forget that there is a thousand acting in the downward part as well. That's the weight of this block. And now if we try to find the value of F by solving horizontally first, we know that T is also unknown, F is also unknown. So we cannot uh, get any answers from the X direction directly. So what about Y direction? In y direction, there is only one unknown. So let's go ahead and solve vertically first, right? So vertically, if I'm solving vertically, what am I getting? I'm getting that T sine 45 plus 500 is equals to 1000. Remember again that it, this uh, whole system is staying in equilibrium. Right, because this uh, AD force, if we are removing, if it's getting balanced by this F, it's still going to remain in equilibrium. So upward force is still equal to the downward force. And now, therefore, if you are going ahead and solving this in your Kelsey, uh, 1000 minus 500 divided by sine 45 will be the value of T, right? 1000 minus 500 is again 500 divided by sine 45. Let's see what's the value of T we get for this time. So 500 divided by sine 45 is coming out to be 500 root 2 newtons. And that's approximately, if I convert it uh, into the decimals, it's uh, 707 newtons, okay? And this is approximate value, correct to 3 SF. So that's the value of uh, T that we are getting, but that's not the main concern, right? The main concern is to find out the value of F, but now we can do it if we solve this in the horizontal direction. So solving horizontally, don't mind my spellings as usual. All right, so now let's go ahead and do that. So therefore we are going to have F is equals to T cos 45. Again, doing the same thing, balancing both the sides. So this will make the value of F to be 500 root two cos 45. So this comes out to be 500 newtons. So in order to keep this in equilibrium, the force, if this becomes zero, if the strut AD force becomes zero, the force acting externally over here should be of 500 newtons. So now that's the end of question B as well of uh, question five. And I hope that this whole thing has made some sense. This chapter is really very important and crucial for mechanics because Resolving the forces in X and Y direction or maybe any two perpendicular axes becomes pretty much important even if you talk about uh, Newton's laws of motion chapter. And I guess that will be one of the question uh, upcoming in the like you know in this paper. So yes, make sure that these concepts are pretty much clear to you.